Welcome back, adventurers. This week, we step into the world of the newest release from Balance, the 442 Catamaran, as Phil Berman, the CEO, gives us all a personal tour, including sharing his innovative technology with their latest hybrid options. Witness the perfect harmony of comfort and performance as we unveil a vessel designed for that sailing sweet spot experience, where I quote, the boat takes care of you and is crafted for your pleasure. Welcome aboard the Balance 442. So kick off your shoes and come barefoot with us. We are John and Ali, the Barefoot Doctors, sailing and travelling around the globe. Join us as we share the adventure and explore the beauty of the world. Because life is better barefoot. Hey Phil, lovely to meet you again. Good to see you. And you now have a new boat on show, the 44 foot Balance. Yeah, Balance 442. Yeah, we launched the boat, uh, first boat, uh, a little over a year ago. This is right. hole number six. We just launched hole number 12. Next one available is hole 34. So <laughs> most of our orders are out into like the middle of 26 for pretty much our whole range. Yeah. Or at least we're compressed down to about a two year period. We only sell boats at fixed price contracts. We don't do inflation contracts okay. and things like that. The balance is essentially about building a boat that's got a balance of performance, comfort and livability and quality. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's this, we're trying to be uh, a cat above, so to speak. Uh -huh. uh, you know, if we have an aspiration, it's to be like a BMW M series. Uh -huh. If I had to uh -huh. analogize to a car, this, uh -huh. is the, uh -huh. this is the effort. Nice. The boats have to be sailed uh, easily by just one person or a uh -huh. couple generally. Uh -huh. Okay, when we get into our 58 and our 75, then that, you know, those are bigger, bigger beasts, uh -huh. but the 52, the 48, and the 44, we would like it that one person could sell the boat. Mm -hmm. The 48 and the 44 are in many ways scaled down versions of the 52. They all have the Versa helm, mm -hmm. which you're, you're aware of. Yeah. It's been interesting here at the show, a lot of French people come up and say, oh, but you copied Outremer. We said, no, 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 I'm sorry, we did this in 2013. <laughs> But, uh, you know, it's all in fun. Yeah, no. yeah. But the, the Versa Helm is important. The sight lines are a critical part of all of our boats. <clears throat> if you look at United States Coast Guard studies of boating accidents, the vast majority come from bad sight lines. Wow. Where people are piloting their boat in any kind of crowded conditions and they, and they can't see all around them. Mm -hmm. So we always have glass windows, mm -hmm. relatively vertical, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then there's no window in front of the helm when, you, mm -hmm. when the helm is down so that you have good sight lines port and starboard. Uh -huh. Same up top. So the goal is that you can see four corners of the boat. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So that's an important part of our design. The other part of the design that's important is that if you're piloting a boat with a couple, which a lot of our, our mm -hmm. people are, the on-watch person can sit in the down helm here with the wheel mm -hmm. down, and then the off-watch person, this table drops down, and this becomes a bed. Mm -hmm. And so they can lay here. Because you know, if, it, if you're sailing at night and something happens, you can go over and tap them in the shoulder and then, there's, and then they're close to oh, each yeah. other. Yeah. A lot of our boats, most of them, people will have like a television screen oh, yeah. and then we'll mirror the charts onto the television screen. You can oh. actually really just lounge and see the, the chart as well. Oh, nice. So this is good. Uh -huh. So again, multifunctional folding table. You'd be amazed how much you need more leg space and then all of a sudden you want more table space so that multifunctional table is absolutely brilliant. The galley is, is obviously large and, and functional. We uh, designed our own sort of uh, dish rack so that you put your utensils in here to dry. You can uh, slide plates in. Oh, nice. You can put cups in here. So you have two plate racks and a cup rack so that's really neat. So the balance galley here on the 44 is really compact. You've got the space, you've got a good working area, plenty of storage, but you've also got the U-shape, which is really good when you're in a bit of a rough sea. You've got, you know, that brace each side, which is really good. Everything's very functional and very well thought of. I love this idea here. This draining rack here, and the draining, the draining rack in the sink is just a thumbs up from me. I love the fact that they've put multiple ports in, and there's you know universal ports all over the place that make it easy for yourself as well as visitors when visitors come from overseas. 
so that's really great too. There are top-down uh, uh, dishwashers that we can put in this space for oh, people yeah. that want it, uh -huh. but I think this works really, really yeah. well yeah. with the fresh water. Um, I, I think, as you know, like we only do boats with lithium-ion batteries, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and our boats don't have propane. You know, you've got your convection electric stove and oven. You have an electric barbecue back there. And, and as you also, I believe, know, we uh, partnered with Integral mm -hmm. Solutions yeah. on the high output alternator generators mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. many years ago, actually, we were the first yeah. to work with them. And we really ironed out those alternators, and they're fantastic. Each alternator will charge up to 8kW, but I have found that when I'm running the engine at like 1500 RPM, if, I'm just, if, I'm, if I need to charge an anchor, I'm getting like 6.5kW and burning very little fuel. Mm, wonderful. Um, so they've been a really good partner. Yeah. So we just don't put generators on our boats. Yeah. And it's also greener because anytime you're motoring your boat, you can take a charge off the interval. Yeah. We have a nav station, but it's very interesting. A lot of people think a nav station is something of anachronism because You've got a chart plotter over there, you're running your charts there, you can lay down here on your iPad. Mm -hmm. So a lot of our customers, instead of having the chair that goes under here, they actually ask us to make additional cabinets. Okay. Yeah. But that's customer choice. We can make a larger nav. But then raise yeah, so the sofa seats as well. The reason that we raise the plant is that when you're sitting in the boat, you want to be able to see outside. So once again, it's a sight line issue uh -huh. Uh -huh. and a spatial issue to have the plant. We can do larger windows for people that want them. It's a constant question that we get. Years ago, you couldn't even put big forward hatches in these boats to achieve ISO regulations right. for safeties. And I still consider big, big forward windows something of a, a safety hazard okay. or potential. Because if you get water incursion in your boat, somebody doesn't latch it down or it, 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 there's a failure, and you get water along here, you, all your electronics are over Rock here, that. your batteries are down here. Uh -huh. So, you know, you don't want any kind of salt yeah. water incursion. So we'll, we'll put larger uh, ports, and then if somebody wants, we can also have a larger opening hatch, hatch you know, there. You know, one, one thing a lot of people I see at this boat show don't understand is that, so you see these mullions mm -hmm. here on this boat? To save money and to not increase labor hours, the builders either wrap these with leather or faux leather, uh -huh. or they wrap them with vinyl or they cover them with a counter mold. Mm -hmm. So we don't do that. It comes out rough and then we, f we sand, and we yeah, fill yeah. and filler, and then we sand it. And what you end up with is this totally light, never mildew, never tear, and never fade uh -huh, in the sun, uh -huh. never queak and squeak. Like This is like a racing boat. This is one of the things that we can do in South Africa so yeah. we can finish these kinds of details yeah. with a bit more you know, fairing. And certainly your finish overall has is, is always been spectacular. You know, Thank you. It, yeah, it's, uh, your woodwork, your cabinetry, it's always been amazing. Thanks. Yeah. The, the furniture is all foam core panels and then it's real wood veneers over uh -huh. those panels. Uh -huh. This boat here is kind of unique because this is sustainably sourced bamboo. Oh, so nice. it's ecologically uh -huh. sourced bamboo and it's really, uh, I think it's quite lovely. But you know, we've done these boats, we've done them in Maple, Mapele, Hogany, uh, yeah. Ash, Koto, Zebra Wood. Yeah. And then the customers also get to choose their, their soft goods, uh -huh. their flooring, just a lot of uh, design choices. Mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. And that's why we have a configurator on our website. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's that, clever, yeah. yeah. So like Aston Martin has that. Yeah. And when you're working with a configurator, you can see uh -huh. how the colors yeah. interact. Yeah, so it's kind of fun. And uh, another thing that is interesting about our boat is that we have shore power cords for both uh, 110 and, and, and 220. Everything goes through the inverter directly to the batteries. Mm -hmm. Nothing on this boat runs off anything but the battery. It doesn't matter anymore if you have 50 hertz or 60 hertz equipment on this boat. You could sell this boat to the United States, you could get to a dock, you can plug in at the dock there and charge the boat. So right. you never have any of these shore power issues uh -huh, when uh -huh, you're traveling uh -huh. on our boat. You have US plug, Euro plug, and USB ports. Uh -huh. Hi guys, the things we really love about the balance is the finish, you know, the, the, the cabinetry, the quality of the finish is always there. You know, it was there three and a half years ago when we toured the last balance and it's here again. Beautiful woodwork and as I said, the finish is just gorgeous. They don't skimp on anything, which I really, really admire because it's really easy to kind of cut corners to try and get the weight down. This is a, a performance and as well as a, a comfortable cruiser, so it is a balance, you know. So, yeah, it's aptly named. But what I love about, another thing I loved about is it's so high. You've got this great big open area, plenty of windows. You've got ventilation at the front too. 
so that you can pop those hatches. You've got clear view all the way around and, and the light that streams in here is absolutely beautiful. So it makes you feel like it's, a, it, and it is really spacious. For a 44 foot boat, this actually feels like a lot of boat. Come down here because there's something I really want to show you. These guys have made the steps so that you can go backwards. Phil showed us the hatches here and you know, to the untrained eye, these hatches might just seem like they're just flush and it's all very nice and streamlined and everything. But the really important thing about these is they don't have any holes in them that dust and dirt actually get through. I'm forever cleaning out the dust and the dirt out of our hatches all around the place because they have this hole, finger hole that you pull up. Whereas Phil was showing us the, the magnetic tool that they've got to pull it up so that it's completely flush. And I think that's brilliant because the amount of that gets in those hatches, you wouldn't believe. Hair, dust, dirt, sand, all sorts of things. And we're clean on our boat. So I think these are amazing. Hi guys, thanks for watching. And if you're new to our channel or you haven't subscribed yet, we're encouraging you to subscribe because we really wouldn't want you to miss out on all the exciting stuff we have coming up in the future. And that'll also help us get the videos out to more folk as well. So go ahead and do it right now, guys. Make it happen. On our boats, as you know, we run the master berth, the Thor chip forward on both the port and owner side. And then you have this, just this big shower space. And then we'll put a rail here to hang things. Mm -hmm. And it's just a complete it's white space. Yeah, it's right? lovely big you shower. Know, yeah, a big shower, and you can kind of a wet locker. Behind here, you have access to the VersaHelm steering. So you see you have the chains coming down from the two sprockets. This is uh, leading to Vectran cord. We reuse Vectran because it's not subject to expansion in different humidity environments. So this is access, you know, to, to your, to really your deck access. breakers yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Oh, All right, yeah, so in yeah. there, there's a light. Okay. This is the electrical panel. Everything on our boats is labeled. And, 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 and trackable. The, the other thing about our boats that's different from a more production boat is, you know, have real bulkheads and they're glassed and joined yeah, yeah. to the hulls. And our cabinets are all handmade and hand fitted to the yeah. hulls. So when you're sailing on a balance, you're not getting the, this squeaking sound and this creaking yeah, that you get yeah, on a production yeah. boat. Now this is a sliding yeah. privacy door. Feel how light this is. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. And actually, our sliding doors in the salon are really, really special because they're carbon reinforced and they're also foam core uh -huh. and there's nothing better than a composite door. If you do aluminum you have to sp spray it uh -huh. and there have been five or six years the aluminum will start to corrode uh -huh. in the salty uh -huh. environment and then, and then it's not easy to repaint uh -huh. that and make it look pretty again. So if we walk forward here we're in the master. Where, the, where my hands are here this is the hull. If you want a more performance oriented boat obviously you can't let the hulls get too wide. Uh -huh. You end up only having like a tiny little single bed uh -huh. up here and the boat ends up living much much smaller. This is the bridge. This goes right over the bridge of the boat. So really big beds, nice and comfortable. At anchor these beds are great because you can open up the hatch and then that port opens up to the outside locker so even if it's raining you'll get air through there. Now this is an air con vent which is actually it built, built into in. this channel. Yeah. And then on the starboard side of our boat, the owner side, most of them we have just a big walk-in locker. It's just a big storage space. If you see this flat section up there, it's a crash box. Yeah. So the whole yeah. bow of the boat's like a big foam block. Yeah. And then below this, obviously, this is a watertight bulkhead, mm -hmm. right? This flooring. And then you have the escape hatches. The I don't like them. <laughs> I think it's getting to the point where the EU may allow them to be, yeah, just because they, they create they create more problems they than do. they're meant to. You know, I, I was talking to somebody here, a monohull person, you know. They still think, oh, catamarans capsize. Well, yeah, I guess they can. In all my years of selling catamarans, uh, over a thousand, I haven't had a single customer of mine capsize a catamaran. Uh -huh. I mean, you have to work at it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you have to work at it. You uh -huh. really do. Yeah, and of course, if it's a composite cat and it were to capsize, it's, that's your life, right? It's, it's so comfortable. I mean, you know, I call the 442 a performance cruiser. When you buy one of our boats, there's a, like a real customer experience that's real different because mm -hmm. you're sort of intimately working with us in the factory. You're mm -hmm. choosing your boat, mm -hmm. right? And almost everybody, I would say everybody, but almost goes to South Africa before their boat starts construction, meets everybody, mm -hmm. picks all their stuff mm -hmm. out. They're all going to do a safari. Mm -hmm. yeah. Many are going to go to the Namibian desert. You know, they're going to do the Cape Tour. They're going to do the wine country. You've been to South yeah, Africa. Yeah, 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 it's such a nice it's place lovely. to visit. Yeah, 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 it's a good experience, you know. This is a convertible 
bedroom and office space. This slides out. That cushion there fits in there and there's another one up there and it goes in here and then this becomes a nice double bed. When this goes in you can lift up that and access storage underneath okay. there. And then this drops down, turn this into an office, right? A yeah. space. A person can really work here. I think it's a really nice thing to have nice this. Space. And then as you go back, on this boat you have a shared a midships mm -hmm. shower and toilet right in here and a sliding door. But the shower and toilet are really nice and big with the sink. I think it, yeah. it works, you it know. Yeah. What, what's important is being able to get up easily, right? And, and then the critical thing is that you have to be able to sit up and read at night, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. And so you have, we have a reading light here. You have your coffee here. Uh -huh. You have a couple of little books and, and things. Behind here, this is the um, US plug, Euro plug, USB port. When I'm, we're designing these boats, it's a really interesting thing that you're trying to do. I'm over the bridge now. You want the bridge deck clearance to be up uh, yeah. high. You, you don't want your wet deck to be high, high either. The thing a lot of people don't understand is the more freeboard that you add to a boat on the gunnels, uh -huh. the more weight you're adding to uh -huh. the boat and the uh -huh. more wind that you're adding uh -huh. to the boat. Uh -huh. So you're always in this balancing act between yeah. bridge deck clearance, yeah. Space, headroom, and weight. You what know? is your project clearance? Fully laden. It's like two feet eight inches. Right. We have little line boxes for everything. So at the helm, those are all line boxes for everything. Right. Here it's all line boxes. When you go up on the deck, you'll see that all the halyards are in line boxes. Because right, right. if you just feed lines down, they don't tangle up, and then it's so clean. And the self-tending jib track. And the reason the sheet goes up the mast. Yeah, is that sure. is that then it just slides Quite right <laughs> without having to to have another set of uh -huh. pulleys and cords and stuff and our anchor i think it, this is different than on the 526 okay so on the 526 the anchor is all the way in the front yeah so on this boat we moved it back here so there's pros and cons to everything mm -hmm. the one camera that I really liked on my boat, the fo f focusing on yeah, the anchor. Anchor cam. Yeah, yeah. You could see the angle. Yeah. That is a valuable uh -huh, camera. Uh -huh. If you want to single hand the boat. The other thing a lot of people are doing now on our boats is they're getting an electric uh, bowsprit furler. Oh, yeah. One of our customers, uh, Paul Britton, and his wife Meg, they, they just sailed together and he said, yeah. Phil, with the electric, you know, asymmetrical furling spinnaker, I'm using this sail 50% more than everybody uh -huh. else. Uh -huh. So while it's a, it's not as high performance as a sock spinnaker, I'm using it so often, my boat's higher performance. Yeah. So you see here on this side of the boat, this is this big size 60 deck hatch. If you do need to get big sails in and out, right? This is big. Yeah. And this is the zipper here. You can get that. Yeah. Right? And then we have these rails. So when the sail drops down, it doesn't fall. And otherwise, we have hard solar panels. We like the glass panels because they perform really, really well. Uh -huh. And we could put them in a, a tray and have air coming yeah, underneath yeah. them. Yeah, they're very efficient. Yeah. You've got the the three line boxes. You've got your two main sheets because we don't have a traveler on our boat. You have your main halyard, your uh, toppy lift, and uh, two reefs. And then this is the sun bimini. So basically, you don't need a dodger on a balance. You don't need any eyes and glass protection. And you don't need anything up here permanently because basically, when the weather's foul, this yeah. is obviously closed. Yeah. What's cool about this, these, is that it's permanently vanged. You don't need a preventer. This way, you can loosen it on mm. the windward side and get more twist in the sail, mm. or you can pull it down more mm. on the mm. other side and flatten the sail. You can get really perfect mm. shape with this, mm. but it's always vang. This okay. is the emergency tiller here. Yep. In the engine rooms, we have the integral alternators. Uh -huh. So these are waterproof engine rooms. So you see we have an electric grill here. And it's got like a cover over it, so when you really want to heat things fast. And then a storage underneath it. I don't know if you've seen these things. These are um, oh, yeah, surfboard yeah. racks, uh -huh. paddleboard racks. These uh, surfboard racks were invented by Dean Parmon's uncle, Jonathan Parmon. Oh. Who's our chief? Claiming the, the, the surfing that, rights. Yeah. Is that right? <laughs> through, through the name. <laughs> I mean, I surf, but. Uh, <laughs> so Dean's, Dean's uncle, Johnny, was a world professional class surfer, wow. like a big wave surfer. In fact, he 
uh, was the first one of the first guys to surf dungeons, which is one of the largest waves in South Africa. Uh, so yeah. you can put fishing rods and, yeah, and yeah. paddle boards and kite boards and stuff. Yeah. We get a lot of requests from people that want either an electric motor yeah. or a hybrid solution yeah. or whatever. And we've been looking at the market really mm. carefully for mm. the last couple of years. Mm. And if people wanted, they could get Ocean Volt or whatever. Mm. And then we mm. say, sure, you really want that, we'll do that, no. right? Uh -huh. But our preference is to, it was to find one product that we really wanted mm -hmm. to do consistently. Mm -hmm. So we had such a good relationship with Integral, with the alternators, mm -hmm. you know, because we were really their partner in innovation. We were the first to put dual integrals on a catamaran. Okay. So we've been working with them and following them, and they have this new E-Drive system. So what it is, is we can use the SD60 Yanmar drive, which is very important to us, the sail drive, because they're really quiet and we really yeah. like them. And on the back of the engine, there's a hub, which is an electric motor. So the E-Drive 30. So the motor itself is 20 horsepower on either side. Okay. Okay, so on, a, on our cats, you'd have 220 horsepower uh -huh. electric motors. Uh -huh. So the bow can run only on those electric motors if you want, but when you're really needing to motor somewhere and get somewhere, uh -huh. obviously the diesel engines yeah. are okay. much more. Yeah. And that's simply because lithium ion batteries are a 22% less dense energy mm -hmm. carrier. You'd have to have so many lithium yeah. batteries on your boat yeah. to, to be pure electric that it's, it's mythic. So the advantage of the E-Drive, the bigger advantage in my opinion, is that it's also an integral alternator. It will charge up to 15 kW. If you had two, you could charge at 30 kW at 48 volt. It's going to charge so so fast. fast. I think the electric motors will probably be used most when people are coming in and out of port and day sailing. So we're installing and, and one on a on a balanced cap. Uh, we're putting it on a 526. Uh, right. It will be our first and we'll be working with them. Uh, they also regens, does it? Okay, so currently, the, the, the this year it won't be regen, but anybody that gets one, it, they'll have, the, it, they'll, they can add regen. Right, okay. But we really like the um, you know the parallel hybrid yeah, approach yeah. and for us it's very important that it's a sail drive because we like our engines outside of the living spaces yeah. in their own compartment yeah. um, using a Yanmar engine. Thanks very much. Full Thank you. One, another wonderful boat from Balance. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Yeah, if we get more overwhelmed we'll be really overwhelmed. <laughs> Thank you. No, well, thanks, thanks for your time. Right. Take yeah. care. Right. Thanks Balance again. A lovely boat. For a 44 foot boat they've got a lot of space. It's really quite amazing compared to some of the other performance cats and again the finish is spectacular they've thought about everything they're innovating and moving forward with the hybrid engine system thanks to Phil and the team from balance on that wonderful tour and if you think this is the boat for you then contact them on their website Thanks for coming along with us folks. We hope you've been enjoying the boat reviews, but next week we find ourselves back on Expedition Barefoot, cruising Greece, finding those jewels of the Med, delivering aid work where we need it, and bringing you a sneak preview of our new aluminium Portofino build updates. Stay tuned. Thanks for joining us on this journey and don't forget to like and subscribe and if you want to be a part of an exciting way to save lives around the world, join our Patreon family and get up close and personal with us.